What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Maje and I am back with another video and this is NFL Angriest Coach Moments. I've made a coach so angry one time. Um, I was a junior in high school, first year playing football and we were playing a heavy emotional game against Dunwoody. <laughs> I love all cost this game. Um, so it's like what? Second and long. A um, couple seconds left on the clock. It's literally like probably a little bit under a minute. I'm uh, the free safety and we're in cover two and I backpedal. I'm backpedaling watching the um, number one receiver run a go route. <clears throat> and I look and I see the quarterback just take off running. And he passed the line scrimmage, so I dart. I'm literally ha I literally have the perfect angle running towards him, right? Didn't know he stepped out of bounds when I got toward him. Didn't know I'm not looking at his feet. I'm just looking directly at his hips. Didn't know he stepped out of bounds when I ran toward him. And I just pushed him. I pushed him. And when I replayed it back uh, the next day, he literally took one step. Like he literally took one step out of bounds, like this much out of bounds. But um, so I pushed him. Uh, I didn't know the rest behind me threw a million flags, so we get up, he gets up, we're jawing, jawing. The coach is like, ah, just in my face, and I'm like, and I turn around, and they're like calling, um, a sportsman like, not, what is a sportsman like, or what are they call? no, um, I can't remember the penalty name, but anyway, um, yeah. Moves them up 15 yards, they kick a field goal next play, and they win the game. Um, <laughs> Coach was so mad at me. He was also my teacher. He kicked me out of class for a week. So, um, yeah. Mm, I've been there. But anyway, NFL coach angry moments. I love to see the NFL coaches mad. I love to see coaches mad, period. Just to see, like, how coaches act in certain situations. But anyway, let's go. Watch it in the air. Coach Jim wants a holding call. Four picks against Grossman and two fumbles. What do you see about the Bears? Uh, we shut them down that way. No, we, you know, I mean, we, we just, uh, we, the Bears are what we thought they were. What, what, what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's bull? We played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. Some cheeks. <laughs> Translation, they thought they were some cheeks, but they lost. Which is crazy because it's so easy to lose to a sorry team. I can explain that later, but you know what? That's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. But look at this, Tom Brady and Bill O'Brien, his his offensive coordinator, fill in the blanks. That is a heated conversation. And Tom Brady don't got no manly type of yell. He yelled like he wanted, like <clears throat> his mannerism. He looks like. This went on for a while. Y'all see the coach? See now he's he's yelling like like I don't know like how to describe it? I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's a difference in the way that he was yelling than the way that Tom Brady was yelling back. It's like Tom Brady looks like he was whining. I don't know why that just stuck out to me so much. O'Brien comes back for a little bit more. Coaches are trying. Bill Belichick finally has to come over and say, "Calm down, guys." You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win, and I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. We couldn't do diddly. Offensively, we couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We the second half. We 
We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our totally kicked the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Injuries from the uh, game. Talk to the trainer. Next. Mike, why are you in such a bad mood? What do you care? Okay. If you were two and seven, you'd be in a bad mood too. And if there wasn't enough riding on. But I can't even laugh because the Falcons are all four. But we're changing that today. You know what I'm saying? I got faith in my boys, Carolina, you know. Sorry we had to do it to you, but we're about to be a one and four. One and four. Hey, one of the most bizarre set of circumstances that I've ever seen covering football for a long, long time happened at the end of this half with the Oilers up 14 to nothing with the ball under a minute to go, trying to move the ball from their own end of the field, and Cody Carlson has the ball knocked away and fumbles. Then we go to the sideline where offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride obviously hears something and walks toward defense coordinator Buddy Ryan who throws a punch at him and what I have to characterize as a totally classless act. Let's go to Pam Oliver and see if we get a comment from the Houston Oilers. Shout out Pam Oliver, but <clears throat> I have a question for that. So you see that the guy is visibly a lot older than the defensive coordinator. So would the defensive coordinator have been wrong for hitting a bet? What's up? No, you good. No, he hasn't. Will he be wrong for hitting the back? <laughs> All right, I will. Okay. Will you have been wrong for hitting the back? Or, um, or should you just let that ride? Because you know there's a, there's a huge age difference, so... I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me know down in the comments below. You had the end cut. He was open. And Tom's like, you know what? I know he was open. Uh, you know what? I know he was open. I know it. No, Tom Brady got revenge. Okay, okay. But at the same time, now that's how you yell, Tom Brady. That's like, mm, that's like, get in there. Don't. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I just didn't like the first clip I saw him. It didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He's just a little real whiny-ish. Whiny-ish? Whiny-ish? Whiny? Whiny. Whiny. That's it. Whiny-ish. Oh, look at Rex. I think what he's yelling about, Mark Sanchez was on the ground and just sitting there looking. What was that? I did not see the hit because I was watching the run. But it just adds to the misery here for Tom Coughlin, who immediately went to his rookie punter, Matt Dodge. I didn't forget emotion on that play. How the hell you call that? Well, call it on Tom Brady, will you? Call it on those guys. I've never seen that in my life. That'd be nice of these guys. That doesn't work either. Might as well be an ass. That's so true. Being nice to the ref does not help at all. You think... Um, going up to ref and hey, how you doing? How's your day been? Blah blah blah. We had a game. It actually ended in a brawl, but we had a game. We were so nice to the refs, and um, we were winning the first half. Second half, they start playing dirty. Refs are not like like I'm talking about like people are are underneath the pile, twisting ankles, doing all torts, torts, all sorts of things, and. Refs are not calling it. And it's blatant. It's blatant. Like, you can see somebody get the helmet ripped off. It's blatant and they're not calling the call. So, they, I don't think, I just think um, at games you just ignore, ignore the refs. You don't talk to them. If you talk to them, if you want to. Can, I just ignore them. I just block them out because being nice doesn't help. But, um, yeah, that game ended in a brawl. But, anyway. This is exactly what I... You saw the exuberance as Jim Harbaugh and the Niners were running off the field. Watch what happens next. There's a quick handshake between Harbaugh and Jim Schwartz. Schwartz says something to him briefly, and then this ensues. Six 
Jim Schwartz, you can see in the white top and the gray pants there, yelling and screaming back at Harbaugh's direction. Harbaugh's in the middle of that somewhere. The Lions and Niners then go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You're going to see some people putting their helmets back on their heads as if a fight is going to break out. Some people trying to get in there and break it up. Both teams are going into the tunnel where the Lions' home locker room is there. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. With their first Harbaugh goes crazy on the sideline. Well, I'll start off by saying this. Do not blame that game on the defense, okay? I don't care who you play, whether it's a high school team, a junior college team, a college team, much less an NFL team. When you turn the ball over five times, four interceptions, one for a touchdown, three others in field position to set up touchdowns. You ain't gonna beat anybody I just talked about. Uh, playoffs, don't talk about. Playoffs, you kidding me? Playoffs, I just hope we can oh win a game. Gosh. Another game. Look at that. Jim Morrison in playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> is not a Halloween monster. That is Pittsburgh Steelers coach Bill Cowher, who just might be the angriest man in the whole world. <laughs> Look at it. Watch this. Keep in mind, this is footage from a game he won. <laughs> He's got the greatest job a man could have, and yet, for some reason, the guy constantly looks like he bit into a deodorant stick or something. <sighs> I wanted Bill Cowher to come coach the Falcons so Bad. I want him to come out of retirement so bad. I wonder what happened to Bill Cowher. Has he fallen off the face of the earth? Because, you know, a lot of times you see coaches do um, analyst jobs or things of that sort, but I haven't seen Bill Cowher, so I wonder what happened to him. But anyway, that's going to be it for my reaction, guys. If you enjoyed this reaction, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll be back with you guys next time. I'm out.